Tulika, I think both Nalin and Tulika have raised some very profound issues, both in terms of reflecting from within their institutional spaces, but also raising those very critical questions on which we sh with which we should engage if we want to transform and work towards an agenda together. I'd like to invite Mr. So Chada. Can, may I have your permission to stand up and speak? Yeah. great privilege for me to be standing here and talking about this issue that I actually you know, know not very much about except as a human being. You know, I'm, I'm not from this sector. I uh, have not studied this issue in depth. right? And uh, it's only when we were invited to come and speak here that I looked at how you know, what we do is actually impacting this issue and actually making a positive difference. Well, I, I've been fortunate. I, I was you know, had the lottery of birth, born in the right place, so uh, grew up with the right values. This was never an issue. Age 16, I, I joined the National Defense Academy, joined the Indian Army. So again, an institution. So we learned a lot about values, about what is right, about what is wrong. 1992, I transited into the private sector and worked in leadership roles in many multinationals in logistics, travel, and tourism. Timing was right, 1992, 91, you know, the, uh, the, the economy started, you know, changing in India. So I came to corporate at the right time. 2008, I transited from corporate to come and do this with Bharti to run the foundation, to help in setting up the Satya Bharti school program that we run. I'll talk about that. And, and now that people spoke about CSR and all, you know, this has become... You know, the, the, the social contribution from corporates, you know, how they look at governance, etc., etc. These have become big issues. And, and again, one, you know, because destiny is at the right place and, you know, there is so much that we can do to contribute and talk about. So, so why am I here? I'm, I'm here because I believe that we can, I can talk to you about our schooling program. It's called the Satya Bharti School Program. It was set up with a purpose which was shared with you to you know, help underprivileged children in rural India realize their potential. No, sorry. No. And uh, so it was focused on education of underprivileged children with a special emphasis on the girl child. Right. We always believe that the girl child needs focus in India. Right. And how do we transform lives through education? It initially started off as a, you know, a grant-making foundation where we are supporting NGOs working in this area. But in 2006, we took a decision to start our own rural schooling program. And today we have 254 schools in villages in India across six states, giving education to over 41,000 children, of whom 49% are girl children. And that is significant if you look at the fact that uh, the bulk of our schools, you know, leave aside 35, the, the rest of the schools are in Punjab, Haryana and Rajasthan where you know how the sex ratio is and even in Rajasthan we have over 50% girls in our schools in Punjab almost 85% of our teachers are women in Haryana it's about 65% and in Rajasthan it's the reverse because a lot of our schools are in very difficult areas in Jodhpur outside you know in, in the desert in districts like you know Pali, Balisar, etc., these blocks, very, very difficult areas, and of course the mindset, absolutely rural, tough. So, and and there, the number of male teachers are higher. Sorry. Okay. Also, uh, you know, I'm happy to share that 45% of our school leadership, that is the head teachers, are females. In Punjab, it probably would be 85% again, right? So. Without knowing, you know, by, by setting up these schools, we've started making a difference. But more important than just these statistics is the fact of what is happening in the schools. You know, what we were doing towards quality education. All those activities have actually contributed to creating the right kind of human being, whether girls or boys. You know. What we've always believed is not about academics 
and i am a believer that today the world has changed so fast there's technology i mean it will come to every home it will be in your palm so knowledge is on tap so we going to teach children how to use that knowledge of course knowledge is also important i'm not decrying the need for that but more importantly is we focus on holistic development in our schools where we are teaching children about you know values about life skills about respect mutual respect respect for elders respect for society respect for women which should come naturally and i'm delighted to share with you that you know when we sat down and looked at it when this subject came out we found that there were so many things which were happening which were right and when they say what will happen you know i said when when the child comes out of our school what should he or she be i said the right kind of human being so we define as to what should the right kind of human being do and then today we're talking about the right kind of man so i mean uh, what comes to mind is the media the raymond man i mean you know the complete man you know so so are we creating the complete man i don't know i'm sorry if i'm so are we creating the complete man who will come out of our schools from the satyabhati schools and who will be sensitive to everything i do believe we are on the right road i do believe that we will make a difference because of little things which have happened our education i mean one we are making we are conscious of our responsibility as educators as a corporate and while nilin spoke about you know the fact that i'm going to talk about our social impact but within bharti as a group we've got you know companies like airtel which are global companies bharti infratel which are listed companies we got seven joint venture companies with with axa with del monte etc so i'm proud to say that you know in terms of governance in terms of addressing these issues we are probably at par with the best in the world if not better in some respects so so we are we are there now you know and and i do believe that i'm proud to be part of this organization in terms of our work in school i mean i've spoken about the belief in holistic education i do believe that our schools are platforms for catalyzing social change they've started changing mindsets our children run campaigns it's part of the curriculum right they run campaigns on chosen subjects in their own villages right to make a difference whether it is against drug abuse and alcohol whether it's about empowerment of women so our focus on the girl child our dream and we want to make sure we made sure in every village where our school is that there is no girl child who is out of school so our children run campaigns for that our children have got sarpanches that is for people who are from outside this country sarpanch is a village headman i mean he is an elected person who is actually the uh, the head of the village or or a couple of villages so sarpanches have signed undertakings to say that i and my panchayat that is his village council agree and we will help you to ensure that no girl child is out of school we work with parents to convince them to send girl children so you know how, how social norms are you know if they can send one child to school who will they send they keep girls at home for different reasons right but we managed to change the mindset of parents and they want to send girls to school and not only send girls to school i mean eny did a survey of social impact around our schools and they chose our schools a number of things the results were amazing and what gave us real joy was 97% of parents of our children girls said that they are saving money for the higher education of their daughter when i say higher education is after school and these are first generation learners the parents are daily wage earners right so that's the kind of impact which has happened school leadership councils we have head boys head girls girls are you know house captains so in those villages where there are mindsets which are strong where there are you know uh, different you know social beliefs there these children are together they are working together playing together they are leaders they are becoming leaders and we do believe that this is making a huge impact mothers of our children are mid day meal vendors in our schools so those mothers who by and large have been absolutely uh, illiterate you know they become entrepreneurs they have a bank account they are earning money they have a sense of pride they are looking after their own children so definitely we would believe we have reason to believe that you know their respect would have gone up mothers are in you know, when in parent teacher meeting when we started our schools initially you know the men would sit in front the women were behind and rajasthan parts of haryana gungat totally we couldn't even see their faces today the first few rows the mothers sit in front they talk they discuss they come and attend all our school functions 
right and in some of our schools there are also mother teacher meetings because they believe the mother is important okay students have masters of change i've spoken about the campaigns that our students run they are making a difference our schools have won dozens of awards in the design for change contest which happens every year in the primerica spirit of community awards and i'm delighted to share with you that most of these award winners the individual award winners in the primerica spirit of community awards have been our girl children right so they're leading from the front we never realized that this kind of significant you know difference is happening but i do believe that the right kind of education can definitely address this issue because it happens naturally do we need to correct it of course you all will do various things to correct it at various stages there are a lot of people who would not be fortunate enough to receive this education or live in a world like this where we've grown up to understand this so, so we have to bring about that change somewhere but if we focus on education correctly i would believe that for future generations we would be making this work much easier i don't believe this will vanish as an issue right it will remain an issue i come from the indian army where where i mean you may be a general but if a junior officer's wife walks in the general gets up i mean a lot of ladies will get upset but but a lady is a lady and 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 there are norms as to how a lady has to be respected whether you like it or not we will open the door for you right you might push me aside i get pushed aside now this when i open the door for someone a lot of ladies get upset why the hell am i doing that but i will continue to do that because that's part of my upbringing right i don't believe there is anything wrong in that i would open the door even if a gentleman comes it's not that i'll push the door on his face you know <laughs> so so please please let me make it very clear right so so these are the changes which have happened i mean they are challenging the established gender roles through education right the birth of a girl child is celebrated in all the villages where our schools are our children go to each house to celebrate the birth of a girl child uh, maybe mamta will be able to show them some pictures which are there i mean i am happy to share this with you and this is not the subject that we are focusing on we are focusing on quality education right but that is having an impact i am delighted that so these are some pictures of our schools and children and these are campaigns campaigns against child marriage i forgot about this in a village in jodhpur outside jodhpur our children stopped 13 child marriages children from the 13 child marriages were stopped that won the design to change award but more importantly ladies and gentlemen those five villages the panchayats and the parents we have a signed undertaking they said we will not allow child marriages to happen in our villages so this is the power of education ladies and gentlemen i leave it there and we'll discuss more in the question answer session hmm? this is the the celebration of the birth of a girl child one of the photographs and these are photographs taken by amateur photographers by our own teachers and all it's not that we 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 <laughs> done a photography campaign we don't spend any money every penny that we spend on our school is donors money so we don't have the luxury of marketing our our program we desist from doing that thank you ladies and gentlemen it's been a pleasure to talk to you thank you mr chada for sharing with us some of the norms that you have reversed in the communities that you work in uh, though of course i'm sure there are many more that we have to address in time to come and i'm sure you'll partner with all of us who are here what i'd like to do now is um, go for another round if any of my speakers i know nalin did not complete what he was saying if they have questions of each other or they have reflections because i think this is a very tough panel, uh, session that we are addressing we're talking about transforming our institutional spaces and we are really addressing not just the individual changes in our behaviors our norms our privileges our marginalities we're also talking about how structures will resonate how policies will be implemented nalin brought out this point and i think it's a very telling point for those of us and uh, i'm part of the women's movement that has been critically involved in all the anti rape and anti sexual violence movements in india and in delhi particularly we know that the question is that what do you do to promote equality and non discrimination do you wait for that one violent sexual assault to take to have a response and then you know put together some haphazard system in place or do you also work on education sensitization prevention communications not just for the institution out there 
but for us people within the institutions within ourselves as he so rightly talked about the fact that uh, paternity leave was not an issue that the media industry was looking at, though I know that many other industries in this country are looking at, whether it be in the government or in the NGO sector. So I'd like to open this up in case there are any additional remarks or questions you have or reflections. We'll start with you, Nalin, and then go to Tulika. Um, I just wanted to say uh, thanks so much for such a lovely uh, presentation. And uh, um, I just wanted to respond to you on one issue. I think uh, when I was talking about corporate India not being as aggressive as, say, the American corporate sector is in relative terms. Um, let me just um, sort of elucidate a little bit more of that and explain that a bit more. Uh, the point I was making was not that corporate India is not doing uh, progressive policies uh, for on the workplace internally in their own companies. That they are. In fact, a lot of the call center companies, uh, the IT industry in particular, uh, they have brought in a lot of global norms. Uh, in fact, they were the first companies that brought in the global norms and implemented them, and, and uh, they are far better than many of the Indian counterparts. Um, that, I think, is a given. Uh, I think now we've seen the first stage of CSR um, becoming prominent, um, and now we, we, there might be a second leap with the, with the government guideline and 2% and so on. Uh, what the point I was trying to make was that in terms of, of the, going to the next level, which is that you, that America Inc. has been a very active lobbyist and advocate for changing laws which are outside of their own domain. Uh, they might have, they, they, they've done progressive th things internally with their own workplace policies. They've done CSR as well. But they've also been major leaders of social advocacy campaigns with government to change regressive laws. And that is something that corporate India hasn't done, except for issues which are directly of their own business interests. Now, maybe it's a change of evolution. Uh, I don't think there's a, there's a design here or anything. I'm just sort of drawing a, compa a comparison here. And that's what I was talking about. Oh, Nalin, you're absolutely right. If I may give a one-line one response. I think corporate America is mature. Uh, corporate India is still in adolescence. So I think but we're moving in the right direction, hopefully. Yeah? I think quickly uh, to look at, I mean, I, I'm really impressed with the kind of work and by the way, Bharti, uh, Infosys, and I, th I think there are like six um, organizations that we reviewed which had really positive uh, uh, CSR policies. Uh, what we would like to also see, and that again I speak as a philanthropist and a fundraiser for the women's movement, as a fundraising arm for the women's movement, is really to see more investment in the existing women organi women's organizations that have been doing historic work and path-breaking work for years, for at least you know 30 years, and and women and groups that are doing really, they are the front line of defence. Huh? They 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 are miles away from police chokies. They are miles away from uh, district courts, and they are continuing to f support women and women's organising and women's coming together and women's spaces uh, to enable them to even talk about their rights. And and those investments are still lacking. Those investment the state in, is putting in through only empowerment channels not really recognizing the rights piece. Again, without feminist involvement, it really wouldn't go anywhere. And we are looking now at ways in which the international aid is even coming in. So where we have bilateral organizations that are only able to put very large sum, uh, sums of money and are not looking at the smaller groups, not looking at the grassroots at all, and actually disabling them from being able to be equal participants in change. Um, so I think uh, as somebody who speaks for resources, that's where my concern is, is, is coming at. And I think just for us to understand that change will not happen in three years. So now we have this project funding mode, which is for three years. Three years, show us. But that's not going to happen. We have to still understand that there is a need for sustained and long-term funding and hand-holding for groups. Yes, thank you. On. And for those of you who have read the Justice Verma report, know that for the first time in this country in 60 plus years, we have a document on women's charters and ways of looking at reforms, not only in our laws, but also in social practices and in hearing the voices from the ground. I'd like to open up and hear your voice now. Please, just, just, just let me tell you, yeah, I'll take all of you, please. We have enough time. We'll take questions in batches. Uh, please introduce yourself. If you have a comment, that's fine. Okay, yeah, sure, take it. 
And if you have a question to a specific uh, panelist, please direct your question to the panelist, and then they'll respond, and I'll take the next batch of questions, if that's fine with you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Nandita Shah. I'm from an organization called Akshara in Mumbai, and we do interact quite a lot with corporates at different levels. And one of the concerns that we have is that most of the corporates who are willing to invest want to be very safe. So education is not a problem at all. So any work that we are doing around education, higher education is okay. The second is okay. Livelihood is a good good thing, you know. Anything beyond that is no, no. So we have a whole lot of work around safety and we got into safety because we are working with young women and young women can't go to education because they don't feel safe, but safety is not to be touched. How do we break that kind of a mindset that's coming? And the fear is that it's controversial. The fear is that it's, yes, we completely agree safety is very important, but it's controversial. Should I get into that? Should it look like I'm against men? Which it isn't. So how does one articulate that sort of a thing is one. Second thing what um, uh, Tulika already raised is that how do we look at long-term things? Because when we're looking, corporate themselves have a much longer-term strategy. But when they come to CSR, suddenly they get into this, what's my delivery and what's my impact and am I showing my impact and there is a tendency to then see impact in a very narrow way which which it can be shown but why do we want to reduce it to narrow way so how does one engage with that whole process of how do we look at impact and you know how can we learn from corporate's own understanding of long-term strategies and bring it in the social sector thank you Uh, thank you for the uh, lovely presentations uh, to the other panelists. Uh, Nalena and Vijay, thanks uh, for being upfront and open about, you know, not knowing much but still, you know, coming up with it. Uh, yeah, so I'm Kostov. Uh, I work for ActionAid in uh, Mumbai. Uh, so my question to both of you, Vijay and uh, Nalena, is that uh, the, the mechanism of global value chains and the governance pattern, if you trace it, it would have... Uh, the global buyers who dominate and who depict a masculinity and uh, well when it comes and percolates down to the global sellers which are mostly in the global south at, as uh, it is them who bear the brunt of that masculinity so as uh, industry leaders how do you look at more responsible procurement or sourcing of, pro of products or services uh, and have you even thought about more gender sensitive uh, uh, value chains uh, that would be first question uh, the second question it's very connected to what nandita said in a way so um uh, vijay said that uh, uh, vijay or and nalin uh, mentioned both about uh, the adverse sex ratio so since uh, uh, bharti has uh, its linkages in so many joint ventures uh, would it also not make sense to talk about uh, a campaign on adverse sex, sex ratio to address it uh, or to partner with organizations who already do it in a way? Hi, good morning. Uh, this is Raju. I am from the International Plan Parent Federation, South Asia's regional office here in Delhi. Thanks, presenters. Uh, this question is straight to Vijay. Yeah, I mean, a wonderful presentation, trying to you know talk about a very novel cause. Um, few things which I uh, just to start with. Uh, you talked about this being a very donor-driven, donor-funded program. So, how do you define the sustainability piece of it? You know, once you have the funds out and the way we are in an adolescent phase and all that. If we die young, death, things like that. You know, which I hopefully I will not be. Uh, the other thing is about uh, uh, how, what are the selection criteria because your focus is primarily in north part of India where you go to the eastern part or the western part, there are still avenues to work it on, that is one. Uh, the other part is you have a right to education here in India 
you have you already have a massive you know education system in india with a huge you know success stories here and there so uh, how how do you collaborate because you already have existing system right and you are doing a kind of a parallel or some uh, linkage uh, you know uh, aspect to it so yeah that's all thank you So I think I'll have to respond to that, but maybe before that, uh, you can talk about the value chain and sourcing. I don't know. <laughs> okay. uh, I'll take your question first. Uh, um, I think the point about corporate being safe. Uh, has anyone here been to the Reliance Jamnagar refinery? Uh, now, if you go to the Jamnagar refinery, you will see only two things on the wall. And I'm only par I'm sorry, I'm slightly flippant, but you will see only portraits of Dhirubhai Ambani and quotes from Dhirubhai Ambani and, and, and Mukesh Ambani. And the second thing you will see, apart from uh, personal hagiographies of these two, is messages on HIV. Um, all across the place. Now, Reliance partnered with UNAIDS a long time back. Now, that to me really surprised me when I went there. They also run a very big ART center there, and um, one of our, I used to work with the units, then one of, one of our country directors, he went there, and he was very impressed with the kind of regimen they were doing there. Now, that's one part of the story. But to respond to your question, I wanted to give this example, because while they might do it internally very well in the areas that they work in, um, have you seen, I'm not aware of, of Reliance or any other major corporate uh, giving voice to the campaign against 377, um, publicly at least. They might do it in closed doors, they might do it in meetings with the PM, they might do it with the parliamentary forum on AIDS. Yeah. Uh, so so the, the point I'm trying to make is that I, I think part of the structural reason is that India Inc. in comparison to uh, America Inc. is in a much weaker position. It depends a lot more on government for patronage for, because of the political economy we have. America Inc. Inc. has a different, it can, it can afford to go out and touch upon issues which are social fault lines and put pressure on government because government needs business more than business needs government. I think it's the other way around here and that I think is part of the deeper reason. It's not because of some deeper conspiracy or anything. It's simply because of the way this country works. No, no, uh, the point, the what the point I'm trying to make is that at the level of advocacy, at the level of taking big positions, for example, after the 2002 riots, uh, a couple of business leaders did take a position. Anuaga, for one, a couple of others, and very quickly, they were, very quickly, they, they had to give a very craven apology, uh, and that happened. Uh, and you saw Indian change. That's not because their position in that change; it's because because of their dependence, because of the power equation. And I think that's a re, that's a thing that we must acknowledge in this country. Uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to respond on, on value chains, you had a question on value chains. Uh, I think, I can't speak of value chains or for consumer companies, I don't work for one of those companies, but I can tell you very honestly that as far as the communications industry in this, company is con in this country is concerned, or there's advertising that affects every company in, the, in this country, I, I think there's absolutely zero evidence that, that foreign norms of identity and so on uh, reflect down. In fact, if anything, the entire move in the industry is to develop to speak as much to the consumer or to people in their idiom and to replicate their, their tones. So I think this notion that somehow we are replicating blindly what's happening in the West coming, I think that's Boncom. Thank you, Nadir. Okay, I think a couple of points. One, of course, is Satyamev Jayate, where Reliance Foundation gives a matching grant, but it's sponsored by Airtel year after year. So, and, okay. You did take up the LGBTQI Yes, issue. absolutely. So, and, and the other point about, you know, corporates only using safe subjects for funding. I think that's absolutely right. But again, you have to use the one of the safe subjects to get the message across. So it's education. I think most corporates are not aware about issues, about the fact that they can be funded. And of course, there has to be some advocacy with the with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, that the subjects that you're talking about should be included in the rules as one of the areas which can be funded under the CSR. So you've got to look at that. Is it there? If it is there, more than half your battle is won. Then you've got to educate the corporates that this can be funded by you. And you've got to make it project-based. So you, you, you work for the corporate and take it to them. So I think that's the work you'll have to do. Uh, coming to your question about our foundation, you know, I, I desisted from talking about Education, that's too close to my heart, and I would have carried on and on. But yes, 
sustainability is a big issue because we become big we spend our current spend just operating expenditures in the region of 50 crores per annum keeps growing every year and capex commitments are also continuing now we got to add because of the right to education act we got to almost double infrastructure in our schools we built four room schools primary schools saying that we'll run it in two sessions right to education access we don't care how you run it you got to have eight rooms so we got to build those four rooms because it's a commitment to the community so we need those funds so we are working on 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 different um, uh, you know methodologies building up our corpus looking at institutional partnerships and then coming to other point how do you impact the others while we have this 254 schools which are a sort of laboratory from where we learn right and and from where we we understand what is happening because we were not experts in education when we came in here but now we believe we have enough learnings to take it to the government system so we've started work with government schools already i didn't talk about that there are 20 government schools in which we are working on full holistic quality improvement you know programs there are over 300 government schools where we are running remedial centers for out of school children and we'll do more and more of that we'll now in so setting up our own schools we are clear that we'll work more with the government we'll take the competencies learnings processes and systems from here to you know to to to, to the government schools and and that's going to be our future strategy